Well, we appreciate everybody coming today, as uh, Ken uh, Crokin announced. Uh, my name is Joe Lummeler. I'm the Trauma Program Medical Director here at Genesis Medical Center Davenport and have been for about the last 15 years. And we would first like to expend, extend all of our sincere condolences to the friends and families of Mackenzie Morgan, uh, Stephanie Smith, and Brandon Roberts. Uh, also to the family and friends of, of Corey uh, Brown, who's currently in our intensive care unit. Uh, there has been in the community a lot of speculation about the condition of Corey to the point where at one point his father even had to outline in a public blog about his condition. Uh, we thought that that actually spoke to the idea that we should clarify that condition and avoid a lot of speculation about it. So with the permission of Corey's family, uh, we are going to actually give a brief update. What I've asked is for Dr. Calvin Atwell, who's one of our attending trauma surgeons in our trauma program, to give us an update on how he is doing at this point. Corey is uh, still in critical condition. He presented with multiple uh, life-threatening injuries. Uh, he underwent about six hours of surgery to uh, repair his injuries. Currently, we have him in an induced coma, and tomorrow we're planning on waking him up and uh, taking him off the respirator. Uh, at this time, we anticipate that Corey is going to survive. We're not sure of the long-term uh, disability that he may have, uh, and we just are taking one day at a time. Uh, his parents are uh, with him constantly, and um, the extent of his injuries, he had a significant left uh, chest wall injury and lung injury. He had a ruptured spleen, he had a shattered left kidney, he had a fractured pelvis, he had a fractured left femur, and uh, underwent extensive surgery. And uh, for the first 24 hours, he was pretty unstable, but the last 24 hours, he has stabilized, and uh, at this time, we expect him to recover. Thanks, uh, Cal. You know, as one looks through uh, the events, our trauma program has a vested interest in the safety of the community, and we've made it our business to try to be at the forefront in injury prevention. In fact, it's actually a requirement from the state of Iowa that the verified trauma centers be involved in injury prevention. And we know that one of the best ways to treat injuries like this is to avoid them to begin with. Uh, and actually, I think that's pretty well borne out by what's happened in the press. And I'm going to read uh, two quotations. One is from, from Corey's own father on a blog. And it, it starts uh, and ends, quote, Please let someone learn from this, end quote. Larry Leiter, Mackenzie Morgan's grandfather, also was quoted in the Quad City Times article. I'll read directly from the article. Quote, most kids feel that they are invincible, that something's not going to happen, and then all of a sudden there's a reality check that something bad can happen. We just hope that kids learn something from this. We've been working hard to teach young drivers and old drivers alike over the last 15 or more years in this community with aggressive programs that educate people about driving while intoxicated, driving while impaired. Uh, currently, there's a lot of effort working on driving while texting. And I would tell you that in the last year alone, uh, both on the Iowa and Illinois uh, sides of the river, we've had a concerted effort in this regard with lead agencies from our Quad Cities Safe Kids, Quad Cities Safe Communities Coalitions, which involve all of the hospitals, all of law enforcement, all of the fire departments, we've worked on this pretty aggressively and will continue to do so. There have been, in the last one year's time, with Davenport Fire Department on the Iowa side and the Moline Fire Department on the Illinois side, at least nine Operation Prom Night events that have worked with young people in high school about the problems of driving while intoxicated. Now, we're addressing this issue because the, the driver was allegedly under the influence. And although there's an ongoing police investigation, uh, with everything that's been discussed in the community, we want to make sure that people understand that, that this is something that, that probably should be discussed. There's been some concern that, that this is the wrong time to discuss this, that it's insensitive, and that it's inappropriate to do so when we have such an outpouring of grief for those who have died, and for Corey, who's now you know, in an ongoing struggle for recovery. Uh, on the other hand, we know that when one tries to make a change in our culture, that utilizing sentinel events and utilizing a real story has a tremendous impact on a community and on people's perspectives of these things. And on any great cultural movement, in this situation it's a cultural movement of safety and preservation of the life of our young people and drivers, that these sentinel events and stories carry a tremendous weight. 
And so to, to our way of thinking, this is exactly the time we should be talking about this and exactly the time to make this point again that young people and old people alike, people on our streets, your family members and our family members are being affected and injured in these types of circumstances. Now, our trauma program will continue to do this. It's, it's clear that even though we've seen drops in traffic fatalities over the last five years, even though this last year we've seen even another drop in our major trauma patients here related to that, this is clearly still an issue because we always have the problem of young people that are new to driving, young people are new to being adults making decisions like this, and we want them to make good decisions. The ramifications of this are tragic. I mean, again, we extend our deep sympathies to all those involved. We'll continue to work on this project. We really appreciate the support of everyone in the community, all of the MS providers, all the members of the Quad City Safe Communities Coalition, the Departments of Public Health, everybody has been working on this. We will continue to do so, and we'll try to reemphasize the efforts as, as one can see again, to be uh, dedicated to the, the idea that we will be able to prevent this type of tragedy.